I went up mm. to San Francisco because mm. once I got to America, I think I was already there. Yeah, well, it might have been just the day or so before I left. I just thought, Ellsberg. Wow. I've got to do Ellsberg. And, well, how can I do this? And so... Did you know where he lived at the no, time? No, 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 no. But it was through... Because right. she, she'd been to the university and her partner, you know, they'd been... They were involved at Berkeley. And I think nice. it was her... Her supervisor or professor or something was a friend of Ellsberg's. Wow. And so it was kind of nicely asked. And Ellsberg just said, sure, tell her to come around. So uh, the first time I was yeah. taken, <laughs> I was taken to Ellsberg's house and, uh, and he, he just told us that there was a note on the door, like, just take your shoes off, let yourself in, set up. And I'll be with you uh, fairly <laughs> soon. And my be, be quiet because my wife has got a workshop going or something down the other end of the house. Right. So we just walked into Ellsberg's house and it was like the Mary mm. Celeste. Tiptoes. Yeah, tiptoe, you know, <laughs> and um, set everything up and it was like, you know. <laughs> and I started to feel really uncomfortable, you know, like yeah. I was a robber or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where the hell is he? You Very know? trusting. <laughs> where is he? And, uh, and uh, you know, we were kind of like, oh. <laughs> and then I heard, um, you know, somebody in the kitchen and uh, put on the kettle. And nice. I went, oh, right, okay. Uh, but then he, it was Ellsberg, you know, but because yeah. I saw he walked back out again. You know? <laughs> and, of course, um, you know, and I, I was kind of saying, hello. <laughs> hello. And I was really freaking out, you know. And he doesn't hear oh, all that well. Right. He wears a hearing aid, you know, okay. so... Um, um, he didn't hear me, and uh, <laughs> so it was some time we were there for about twenty minutes before he finally looked and said, "Oh, there you are! <laughs> you know, why didn't you come in?" <laughs> blah blah blah. So I stayed in, um, interviewed him for oh, about uh, an hour and a half, two hours maybe, and then all these people arrived for his his wife had a meditation class on, oh, and there was like a, a lot of people. Um, that had come for this, probably about 20, and I just thought, oh, God, I'd better go, you know. Yeah. We weren't really finished. And Daniel had said to me, oh, i got to show you something downstairs because um, I'd sent him my questions, and I wrote the Ellsberg questions myself. Right. Um, and I think it was the second question was about Stanley Milgram ah, and the Milgram experiments. And yeah. I just thought, mm, mm, it's the same time, you know. It's around, the, you know, leading mm. up to... The Pentagon Papers. You know, starting about 10 years before, uh, and very popular, you know, I learned about the Milgram experiments when I was studying psychology yeah. at university. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I thought, I wonder if he's had a, you know, been influenced by the Milgram experiments. Mm. And of course, Daniel loved that question <laughs> because, of course, he'd been influenced by the Milgram experiments. He'd yes. been obsessed with them for, you know, almost 10 years. Yes. He'd written papers about them. He'd given lectures about them. I have whole boxes of, of notes on the obedience experiments because they were so important to me. Mm. He'd read um, Obedience to Authority and what's mm -hmm. the other one called? Uh, Crimes, of Crimes of Obedience. Yeah, yes. so that's why I was going to, I was thinking of calling my documentary that because it was a great book called Crimes of Obedience that he wanted to show me. Sure. Downstairs, but because the meditation class people <laughs> came in and it was kind of like, you know, I had to, you know, and I went out and I forgot my coat. Yeah. I was so in such a panic to get out the door. It was cold and I only had one coat oh, with okay. me. Right. And it was like a big, you know, sort of, it was, cold. It was winter, it was freezing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I went home and, and, and um, um, I had a GPS, but I've got no sense of direction. So I, I rang him when I, I said, oh, Daniel, he said, who is this? <laughs> and I said, Daniel, it's Kathy. Oh, hi. And I said, I forgot my coat. And he said, oh, my God, you can't go anywhere without your coat. Well, come on over and come back. You know, so I, I went back and I'm walking down and, and Daniel, his kitchen is at the front of the house. And um, I'm walking down the pathway and I could see him sitting at the kitchen table reading the newspaper and it was like about more oh, eight o'clock at night or something oh. and, I, and he, he just looked a bit grumpy you know I didn't know why but he looked a bit grumpy and so yeah. I sort of went hello and he went oh you know and he let me in and he said sit down you know so um, I had to sit there because there was funny noises 
coming from the uh, from in the lounge room. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a scene from Rosemary's Baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can cut that out. Um, um, but uh, anyway, so um, you know, I'm sort of sitting there. You know, I said, "Oh, you know." And he told me it was. I said, "Don't you do uh, that as well? Don't you do meditation?" He said, "Oh no." <laughs> and um, and I said, "Oh, okay." And I think we said another. And he said, "Look, we better be quiet because we're disturbing." There was no doors. It was all kind of we couldn't see them, but it was open plan. Sure. So there I am. I had to sit there for about ten minutes, and Is Daniel it? Daniel Ellsberg and I just staring <laughs> at each other <laughs> in the kitchen. How insane! That was really weird. <laughs> And then finally, you know, they sort of stopped and I sort of tiptoed in, you know, really literally tiptoed and with my big boots trying to tiptoe and they all started laughing at me, you know. <laughs> I couldn't find my goddamn coat. Somebody was sitting on it. But anyway, look, uh, the, uh, the next day um, um, I learned, what was it? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, no, on the way out, mm -hmm. he said to me, oh, look. Look, I just got an email from Julian, you know, and I said, "Oh no, no don't show me your email from Julian, please. I don't, I don't want to see it because I'm, you know, never spoken to Julian. I've spoken to the appearance, but yes. I was always a little bit sort of, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if, um, mm. you know, I, I should come that close. I mean, mm. independent mm. project and all that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I don't work for Adobe and I don't work for Assange either. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, so he said oh, he wants me to be on the world tomorrow. Oh, nice! And um, and I said, oh, great! You know, because uh, you know the ten part series, the world tomorrow, oh, absolutely fantastic. brilliant. Cypherpunks, yeah, un yeah. uncut. Oh, people must view amazing view, view that. Too. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it really is. Uh, it brings you right into yes. current politics and what what is really happening. But it's also great for geeks. If you, oh, if you're geeky, geeky sort of person listening to the cypherpunks talking yeah. for a couple of hours is amazing yeah. as well. Yeah. You learn a lot. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, so I said, like, "Oh, that's great. You're going to go." And uh, and he said, "Oh no." And I just no. went, "Oh God, uh, I wonder if he's going to think that he's given already." Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, not good. In your uh, bad, bad books with Julian. It, it, <laughs> And so anyway, I I, uh, I thought, oh shit, you know, I've uh, I gotta I gotta I gotta try and get some more and take it over, because um, I was going to London to the Supreme oh, Court, and I yes. thought that I I didn't think I'd um, talk to Julian, but I actually met Kristen Rapson and Jennifer Robinson and a few other people. Kristen is of of course the he's the spokesman now, official yeah, spokesman for WikiLeaks. Wikileaks. Lovely fellow, very very friendly. We got on well. So I rang Daniel um, the next day and I said, Daniel, it's been obsessing me. You told me that you're going to show me something downstairs. <laughs> and he said, oh, yes, that's right, the book, you know. And, and I said, well, could I possibly come back, you know. And he said, oh, yeah, of course, you know. Come, well, come tomorrow, come at lunchtime, you know, so we have nice. a bit more time together. Oh, very nice. So, you know, I stayed for about, uh, oh, until about six o'clock in the <laughs> evening, you know, and they were sort of, and I was, I was driving back to LA, you know, and and um, and uh, Daniel and his wife were um, sort of packing me into the car, you know, we just take, giving me instructions, you know, it's like I was um, family or something, you know, we got on so incredibly well. <laughs> Oh, you come, you come as close as yeah. sort of a, a photo Yeah, this is great. This is yeah, because it's video. Yeah, so I'm standing here with Dan Ellsberg, who's invited me to this home, and has just told me the most amazing time. <laughs> 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 you hear me talking like a motor mouth today, but I couldn't get a word in. <laughs> he talked. He did a monologue that lasted about oh Jesus, forty minutes. The he's, first one. He's pretty good. I mean, how yeah. old is he? Now. He's 80. He's 80. And he may have turned 80. I remember now. you telling me he's, he's spot on. Sharp as a tack. Wow. Good health. Mm -hmm. um, works a lot. Works mm -hmm. a lot. And very up to date with events. Very caring about uh, mm -hmm. Bradley Manning. He's really stepped forward to help him. But he's, he's got an extraordinary, always had an extraordinary mind. Mm -hmm. And his attitude or his way of talking about things um, is just absolutely laden with Correct names, correct dates, uh, the facts are always spot on. 
and he he seemed to know lots about you know the cables and which one mm. there was a particular cable he talked about that had been responsible for stopping the war in Iraq, you know, the, mm. the one where they couldn't be given the guarantee and the soldiers couldn't be given the guarantee of immunity anymore, Obama pulls them out, you know, he... Amazing accuracy. And amazing accuracy yeah. and, um, and and personality as well, yeah, and as I say, a uh, total motor mouth, very cultivated man, um, loves to talk, <laughs> likes to chat. 